name is Zach Huntley. Uh, my major is Communication, Broadcasting, and Digital Media. And today I will be talking about golf announcing. So the overview of this presentation, I have a research question. I have goals that I have with this research question, the procedure, how I took it. Give you a little bit of a background of the history of golf, the historic events that happened, uh, or have had happen. Uh, the results of uh, my research question. Uh, also, uh, telling a little bit about the good announcers that I found to go with what I found for my results with clips and uh, my conclusion. So my research question is, what are the best standards in professional golf announcing? Now, the goals I wanted for this was to get a better understanding of what kind of standards professional announcing golf takes. I, I mean, it's watching it on TV, it's, it's not easy, it seems like easy to do, but it's kind of overall a little bit more difficult than, than you would think overall. Another thing I wanted to do was study the best golf announcers and have a better understanding on why they have that title with the standards that I found. So the procedure that I took to do this, I analyzed literature to find standards of announcing, uh, or sports announcing overall. Uh, very, very tough to find, I was able to find something that worked out, and I'll talk about that a little bit later with my results. I watched hours, and when I mean hours of golf, I had around 200 hours or so of, of golf, both new tournaments and older tournaments. Um, I also and analyzed the announcers that I determined that were good off of the standards that I found in my results. A little bit of history of golf overall. Uh, in 1913, according to Robin Hardin's journal of America's first golf hero, Francis, we met in the 1913 U.S. Open. Francis, we met at the age of 20, became the first and only amateur to win the U.S. Open, and to this day, still is the only one. Uh, in 1916, the PGA of America was founded, and uh, the PGA Championship is found, so three of the four majors by 1916 were uh, already made. In 1930, Bobby Jones completes the original Grand Slam, which has been changed from now, uh, which was winning the U.S. and British Amateurs and the U.S. and British Opens in the same year. 1934, the first Masters is played, and then so at, in 1934, all four majors were present in time. Horton Smith was the first champion of that. In 1975, Lee Elder becomes the first black golfer to play in the Masters. For that time period, it was one of the biggest events because Augusta is a really private place. Uh, they've now gone into letting women be uh, part of the golf, uh, golf course now. In 1986, Jack Nicklaus, at the age of 46, shot a final round 65 at the Masters to win his 18th professional major championship. And to this day, it is the most major championships won by any player uh, in history. In 1996, Tiger Woods became the first golfer to win three consecutive U.S. Amateur titles. To this day, that has still not been broken. In 1997, Tiger Woods became the youngest ever Masters champion at 21 years, 3 months. Jordan Spieth in 2015 won, but was just older than Tiger, so Tiger still holds that record. In 2001, Tiger Woods completes what became known as the Tiger Slam. The Tiger Slam, in terms, is where a player holds all four majors at one time. Not in the same year, but at one time. He won it the 2000 US, 2000 Open, 2000 PGA Championship, and the 2001 Masters. To this day, no one else has done anything like this and is pretty much going to stay like this for forever, most likely. In 2003, LPGA champion Annika Sorenstam became the first woman in 58 years to compete in a men's professional golf tournament. Two years later, 16-year-old Michelle Wee competed in a tournament too, so we've had two females in the last 60 plus years to play in a men's professional tournament. So my results here are going, my results of the standards came from the International Journal of Sport Communication by Fabrice Damaris and Tony, Tony Bruce called the power of local and sports broadcasting a cross-cultural of rugby commentary. Yes, rugby. I found these through rugby, a uh, rugby commentary journal, and when I first read this literature, I thought reading right through these, it was perfect for golf. It made absolutely perfect sense, so it kind of made an easy transition to switch over to golf. So the first one I found was expertise and enthusiasm. As a golf announcer, expertise is, well, very important. you got to know the game of golf, otherwise it's kind of hard to be an announcer for it. But to know the inside of it, like these guys do, that's why a lot of the uh, announcers are professional, or were professional golfers. 
Enthusiasm is something to keep the announcer or uh, to keep the sorry to keep the fans into it. If the if the announcers are very enthusiastic at certain parts, the fans are going to stay tuned and be like, okay, what's going to continue to go on in this tournament? Second part I found was the description and dramatization of the action. Uh, for announcers to be descriptive is important because sometimes golf gets bland and people don't understand, you know, is it just swinging the golf club and hitting a ball? And that. So by being descriptive, they can say, you know, certain things as green speeds to the wind to all these certain elements that's going on. And then for dramatizing, just to be the drama of the golf game to try to bring it out on people or people so they uh, stay tend to watch. Uh, providing historical and contextual information. This one was another big one because a lot of times, especially now nowadays, there are more a lot of histories being broken. So they, I mean, to give those you know historic like if Tiger Woods breaks on a turner, they can sit there and say, well, you know, he's you know four holes away from breaking something, or you know, an amateur is out golf and he could break something. They want to give that information so people stay tuned and watching or keep watching the tournament. Uh, the fourth and fifth one are kind of I. I Consider them similar. Uh, evaluating performance of game flow and maintaining audience interest by adding suspense and then turning the technological mix of slow motion into replay and graphics. Uh, evaluating performance is easier than said that they do. They, they usually they take that technical of in their slow motion and if, if a professional golfer hits a good shot and they want to show that shot, show what they're doing well, they'll go slow motion and then they'll come in and they'll, they'll uh, describe on what's going on entirely with that. Instant replay, they don't really have an instant replay, more of a, uh, a, a ball tracker or a shot tracker, where if they say, well, this is a draw hole, a draw hole, which a draw is a right to left golf shot, then when they hit it, they'll show the track of a right to left golf shot. So they brought that in to keep the audience intact with that. Now, going through these and finding the announcers, I found the first one was Jim Nance. He was, he's the announcer for PGA Tour on CBS since 1986. Also for the Masters on CBS since 1989. What makes him good based on uh, the standards that I found was he uses great enthusiasm when he, when he says certain things. And he also provides the historical contextual information when needed. And this first clip that I will play was from the 1997 Masters. Uh, this one was more of the historical uh, information that he gave with kind of a, sh a little bit of the enthusiasm. This for the record. There it is, opening for the ages. So he kind of popped out that voice and he was able to give that historical contact. Now, this one was a 2004 Masters. This was more his, just his enthusiasm because Phil Mickelson at this point had not won a major at all in more than a decade. And this was probably the biggest moment of uh, Jim Nance's calling career. Is it his time? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. When he hit that button and for once, Phil Mickelson has finally got over that hump. Our next announcer is Vern Lundquist, which is a Duluth, Minnesota native. Uh, he has been on the CBS Masters team since 1983. What makes him good based on the standards was he uses uh, great enthusiasm also, which we'll show in the, next, in the two clips of him also. He also provides great historic and contextual information when needed on the golf course. He'll give I mean, certain things that happen, especially at Augusta where around there, just all the history. He'll give certain shots, you know, he'll, he'll bring back and say, here's what happened here and there, and just kind of give that big historical context. And then he also evaluates performance and game flow and maintain audience interest by any suspense. So the first clip here is from the 1986 Masters, when Jack Nicklaus was on the 17th green. This was probably one of the, if not one of his top masters moment that he ended up calling. Of course, no possession of the lead. Goodness. 
since 1997. Well, it makes them good by the standards that I found, both of their expertise and enthusiasm that they have, the description and dramatization of the action, and they both provide historical and contextual information. Uh, just the overall, uh, Gary Cope was a professional golfer, so his expertise in the golf course is perfect, what a lot of golf, or golf fans would like to uh, watch while they're watching golf. The first clip I'm going to play here from Dan Hicks showed his enthusiasm as it was his probably his best call so far in his career. This was at the 2008 U.S. Open, ended up being also Tiger's last major that he's won. Expect anything different? The young Tiger for 18 holes tomorrow. Basically, he, he knew, you know, they, they do this all on instinct, so when he first got in there, it was like, oh, let's, you know, you think you expect anything different from a guy that, you know, maybe he's hobbling on one leg, but he can still do it. And then he also gave the his, or some big information saying, well, we still got 18 holes to go the next day. So he kind of did two things at once during that big moment. For uh, Gary Koch, his one big moment was at the 2001 Players Championship. Uh, where it was a putt that most people were running off the green into the water, and uh, well, again, Tiger Woods is well, was Superman at this point. Johnny, that's better than most. Before the putt, he kind of was like, this is something people have been running off the green. I mean, there's, there's no way he's going to get it close. And he showed the enthusiasm of being like, I mean, it was better than most, but it was better than most. Well, it went in. So overall, they, they were the, some of the good announcers that I found. This is some facts that I found that were given out to CBS during the, I believe it was the 1973 Masters. And this is what they were told while announcing golf, what they, can, they don't want them to do. Want them and want and want them and what not to do. Uh, so such as they never want to, you never want to refer to the Masters prize money. Uh, the water in front of 13th Green is not to be called Rays Creek, but a tributary of Rays Creek. Uh, make no reference to Masters tickets having been sold out. Uh, do not guess where the ball might be. Which I mean, a lot of golf trips, there's times where they do that, but at a sacred place like this, they don't want them to be wrong and all this stuff going on. Uh, another couple of them that they have is do not estimate the length of the putt, which is nowadays don't or doesn't really affect because now they have all this technology. But back in those days, they didn't want them to estimate. And also, instead of identifying Lee Elder as the first black man to play in the Masters, they say to they say that he was is the first person of his race to play in the tournament. So they don't want to make it a big they didn't want to make it a big color factor and all this you know over the race. They just want to say overall in race that it were. So conclusion, overall the project went, over, went good overall. I uh, learned more about how standards from other sports could definitely move into golf announcing and how I didn't think that they'd be able to transition so easy into it. Uh, my biggest strength, of course, was the knowledge of golf. Biggest w uh, weakness was finding the literature with some sports announcing standards and uh, I was able to just run by the uh, rugby one and it, it 